Okay, so what I'm working on here is the underside of my base for my waterfront diorama. And you can see that this is altogether just a mess of wires. Right now what I have set here is everything is connected in parallel, which um, would be nice if all the LEDs were identical, then I could, uh, as in identical in color, uh, or even identical as in the particular LED brand and um, you know, type, size. So what happens here is, um, since they're all in parallel, uh, the power is going to go equally to all the little devices. And in parallel, this is running about roughly around 3 volts. I have a 3 volt battery here. And so 3 volts is going to equally to all these spots. The problem with um, running this in parallel, and I'll show this as an example. I have a battery here. And let's say I have um, a white LED here. So if I put this on, we have power. Now, and this is the example of parallel. So if I put the red LED also connected here, you see that this turns off because the power flow is lower to the red LED. The red LED takes a lot less power. So it's going to naturally flow to, to the lower end and I'm going to lose power to the white LED, which will happen here if I'm running different color LEDs. Now, if I had the red here and connected the same LED, another red, you see that they both turn on, so it's fine. Now, the white LED draws a lot more power, so it's going to lose out. So for this, I have this powered up with a little switch and press up the switch, turns on this power. Now if I add an, a white LED to the corner right here, touching it against this, and when I put the LED here, I'm not going to get a flicker. I know that this is my positive, my negative, and this lights up over here, and these stay on. Now if I were to take the red LED and try the same experiment, you see that the power draw goes to the red LED. What this means is I'm going to have to rewire this whole thing. Now since I'm rewiring this whole thing, I'm going to try to be slick and add a read switch. This is, this is a big read switch. This is a tiny read switch, which, which is what I'm going to try to use here. And I'm just going to put the read switch at the bottom of um, this uh, the base. And on top, I'm going to have a magnet um, activate the read switch. Now that's how a read switch works, is a magnet can attaches. And the two ends of this vacuum close up and closes the circuit here so that power flows through this system. Now I have some wires I'm going to put together. This is a little tool that I picked up from Radio Shack. Uh, it's, it has a wire stripper in, in the body of it so gonna quickly strip some wires needle nose needle nose pliers to hold on to it while I strip the strip the wires now if you notice in my little base I have all black wires it's kind of hard to tell which is positive which is negative kind of got smart over the last year and picked up some red wires and black wires so I know hey I have positive and negative now that I have my wire wrap tool I'm going to start wrapping this so for the wire wrapping tool there's a top end there's a bottom end wire goes into the top little hole and it'll come out through the right here this area right here I'm just gonna hold on to it and for the lead end I'm just gonna stick it in the center hole and all you have to do is hold on to both sides and twist and you have a solid connection like so 
there. That's attached there. Uh, get a black wire for the native end. Now I have a positive, I have a negative, and I have a battery. So positive, I'm gonna attach, hold on to this with the, on the battery. Just positive, negative on the battery. And my magnet is right here. And if I touch the magnet to this, and we have light. So I could go, I could sort of hold on to this a little bit. And see that's get a little close to to this um, read switch and it turns on so the idea is I'm gonna put the read switch on the bottom of here the feet of my GM's have magnets in them so get close to the foot gets close to this I have a connection now this is the most basic of circuits with us with a switch involved the nice thing about wire wrapping is that it's solderless so it's very very easy to just wrap and you're done with it uh, bad thing about it is it is solderless so these are kind of loose so since this is going to be a permanent fixture I'm just going to go ahead and solder this together solid. Now I'm going to switch ends. And solder this end together. And there we go. Now I have this wired up. I will attach a power source which for this I will be using a 9 volt. Originally I had three volts and everything is in parallel. So I short I sort of touched on this earlier about everything being in parallel. I didn't really say there was a solution, but the solution is since I'm using different color things, I need to put this in series. So what that means is the positive end from here goes to the negative end to here. Negative end goes to the positive end of the next um, LED, which let's grab one here as an example. So this this positive goes to this negative end, this negative end goes to this positive end, and so on and so forth, so that this is in series. Now in parallel, these are together. All the positive ends are wrapped together, all the negative ends are wrapped together. So power equally goes to each device. Now in, in series, power goes to the entire system. So whatever uses, whatever um, LED uses whatever power, draws that amount of power, and it passes along so that the entire system um, produces, for this, in, for this case, nine volts. So for this, I would have to do three uh, three for the LED for the white LEDs three for this white or this centerpiece LED white LED and I have a red here and I have a red here so I have four total and three 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 and that's 12 volts what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the two reds in parallel and then series the white and series this white and you'll notice that all these uh, LEDs here these are all in parallel already so this series with uh, this and series with the two reds that are in parallel. Now I'm going to go ahead and start cutting this apart so that I have something to work with. This is a mess. So I'm no longer going to use a switch so I'm just going to go ahead and kind of pry the switch off of here. It's glued on with just a, a, glue, a hot glue gun. So it's pretty easy to remove off of this. So this is one and this is the other end. And if I run my battery here along these two edges, I should be able to light my LEDs up. 
as a quick test. So I know that one end is positive, one end is negative. This ends the negative end right here. I'm going to make sure I remember that. quickly occurring to me that I'm trading one mess for another mess. So there's my parallel connection, these two native wires. Now I have to gonna break this from here. And I have my Strip this quickly. Now I will be attaching a red wire to that side. So I'm going to strip or I'm going to detach this side as well. And see, with proper planning, I could have completely avoided this. But with usual builds, things change as you build along, and you need to adapt sometimes. So, my parallel sides here are these two. I'm just going to kind of twist them up together. So this is now nicely wrapped. I could go ahead and take some electrical tape and kind of clean this up a little bit. This does a couple things. This makes sure that the raw leads aren't touching each other, which could sort short things out. Okay, so now I have a positive and a negative. Just gonna reinsert this. For all intents, for all intents and purposes, this is my negative. Uh, always good to constantly test. This is my positive. positive and we have power that's good so both ends should have power so I'm gonna stick a negative uh, positive end from here to this negative end this will start my series And let's connect my positive end here to my read switch. So at least I have that done. Wrapping tool, where did my wrapping tool go? There it is. Continuing on, these are in parallel, that's set. I have this piece right here that is still in parallel, so I'm going to remove this. Strip 
that. That's my native end. So let's connect this to the native end, my native, my positive to the native. Positive and negative and positive to negative end. So let's see here. This was my positive end right here, and this was my negative end. So I'm gonna cut this off. Actually, I'm gonna use this. This is perfectly good. I'm gonna trim this off. So this is positive to negative here. Now, since I have LED here, I'm going to flip this over. So, put this out here so I can see better. Flip this over. Now if I connect my battery up to it, maybe it switches over here. Let's hold it down. And if all goes well, I don't burn out any LEDs. Famous last words. Now if this is connected wrong, my LEDs won't gonna, aren't going to light up because of the incorrect polarity. So let's swap out this. And there we go. Now all the LEDs are lighting up. one, two, and parallel. This is really bright along with those. So next step is to figure out where to put my read switch so that when my little GM comes along happily, it lights up. Oops, I wasn't supposed to do that. So we're supposed to be standing somewhere around here so now with my jam, since I have magnets on the bottom of his feet, if I stand them right about here, where the read switch is sitting, I'm going to turn on the lights for the base. This base has been rewired. So now that I have everything kind of set up as a test fit, this is my actual light that's going to go here. Um, all I have to do is move the jam into position. And there we go. This is how to find my light switch. So I'm going to take it off, put it back on. And my base is, these are the lights for the base.